All right, we're on. Thanks so much, everyone, for jumping in. Uh, we are having a, a busy day today, so let's try to condense as much as we can. We are facing a lot of organizational challenges right now, informational overload, and just plenty of you know noise and chaos. But I think we're making tremendous progress, and it's just a question of uh, you know us prioritizing certain items and addressing them as soon as possible. So for today's agenda, I put the discuss current blockers and how to make progress within individual tasks. And I also added kind of the structure for the team reporting piece so we can uh, move faster and more efficiently. So basically for team reporting, it would be great to have a high level progress, quick summary, just a couple of sentences. Time to result. How soon can you show existing progress externally? Um, just in terms of showing it to team liaisons or general Slack channel or any other process that we figure out to share those results and then uh, further push them to data visualization and others. Uh, and then blockers, what do you need help with? I think those three items are crucial uh, to have on, on these calls. And before we jump into team reporting, I would like to take a minute and make an announcement that I've uh, tried really hard to come up with a repeatable structure that everyone has been asking about how to approach uh, each individual task. And even though tasks are very different, uh, geotask is completely different from the risk factors, vaccine one, transmission one, and we need something um, you know, abstract and general enough to kind of help us work with that unstructured information. So what I, what I did, I went ahead and created kind of the, the notebook for each individual task, and I'll be uh, adding all the contributors to it uh, shortly after the call. Uh, but basically it has a 12 item uh, list of things. Let me share the screen real quick. Again, the structure is not final. I'm sure we'll find better ways to do it. But basically, uh, something repeatable in terms of thought process can be applied here. So the table of content is introduction, just basically who we are, what we do. Then there is task overview, and it already happened for most of the uh, tasks and teams. For risk factors, it took a form of me recording that Loom video. Uh, for geotask, it was just live discussion in Slack. So whatever form we have, we have to kind of nicely package it for any other new people that are joining us uh, for them to understand how we uh, are approaching task in general. The next piece is defining questions and subtasks and just uh, going through um, understanding what questions and subtasks we're answering and which ones we're skipping. For risk factors, there is one that I uh, skipped and kind of moved into uh, transmission task. Um, again, because it, it does sound like a trans transmission task to me. So it's important to filter out the, the tasks and sub subtasks that we're focusing on. Um, the next piece is defining scope of work. And uh, it's, it's super important to understand what exactly is the problem and I also included the quote of Einstein here just because the formulation of the problem is often more essential than it, its solution and we have to be aware of that and we have to dedicate a little bit more time to define the, the scope of work. So I took an, uh, some time to actually reformulate these abstract asks uh, from Kaggle into actionable questions like is there an evidence about association of smoking as a factor with increased risks of COVID-19? And just reformatting these questions has a lot of impact on all the, the next stages. So the next is task-specific knowledge base. And this is the most unstructured piece right now. Basically, it's an attempt of us non-medical experts to formalize some structure, like risk factors, uh, obviously have different types of risks, but it also has an attachment to, to stages of disease, for example. So to give you a quick glimpse how it looks like, um, the knowledge base basically has a group of factors, environmental, demographic, and others, genetic, 
stages of disease, just something for people to quickly uh, understand in terms of how the knowledge is, is being formed for this task. Mind maps, just simple diagrams, whatever works for you. Um, the next piece is focus impact, understanding the dichotomy between quick items and things that we're doing for this Kaggle challenge and large uh, you know, vision for what we want to build. Uh, types of problems uh, is more specific to types of machine lear learning problems, NLP types of problems, classic ML, just giving people some structure to think around. Um, the next one is exploration tasks. And this is kind of the, the first step. What are we doing? Classifying papers, filtering papers, or, or what exactly are we exploring here? So I listed out two tasks that are being worked on right now for risk factors. Again, I have very limited knowledge into what happened during the past 24 hours, but that was my kind of overall take. Now, next tasks, latest update that showcases what ha happened most recently, any change of direction, daily calls, if any happened, and summary page. And summary page serves as that place where Anthony from uh, Kaggle, the CEO of Kaggle can go to, quickly copy and paste, and include on that um, uh, home page. Also, this can be used for the main experts that have no idea what machine learning is, but just want to see some quick results, the summary of the work for, for the, the current scope of task. So top 10 papers on risk factor analysis, like risk factor smoking, top papers, sections of stage of disease across core 19, stage of disease results here, um, evidence for association of risk factor with COVID-19, smoking, strong source. Whew. That's it. So uh, that, that looks great. That's amazing. Thank you. Uh, again, not the final structure, but I think we can start with that. And uh, three other teams can, can start forming the similar uh, uh, notebook. I'll be sharing that with uh, Daniel, uh, um, Maya, Christine, and uh, Dan, and we'll see how it how it all uh, comes together. Great, looks Quick really question. great. So to create, uh, I think that's a great idea. Um, just wondering if you could include some like the tools that you use to create, like the my map, my map, for example, like mm -hmm. some of the uh, creating those tables as well in the notebook. Yep, sounds good. I think I'll, I'll record an internal Loom video on how I created all of those assets, just so cool. you as team leaders can, can make use of it. Thank you. All right, sounds good. Uh, so let's, let's proceed to team reporting. Task one, risk factors, Maya. Hi, how are you? Good, good. What's up? Uh, good, uh, so basically, <clears throat> um, We've had an amazing progress today. Uh, bottom line is, is that I think that in two or three days we will already have some uh, research that is good enough to include in the final paper. Nice. Um, we have uh, so far uh, some general quotes that helps us to find the uh, uh, papers that we need. Thanks to Daniel, his amazing idea on the research design and his amazing data sets uh, we will now be able to do the following from our side uh, we at the moment we focus on um, envi environmental risk factors um, at the moment Chrissy works to extract um, uh, papers that talk about relation between uh, temperature humidity and uh, population density uh, to a risk factor and from Daniel, we will have uh, temperature dens uh, density of the population and humidity as a quantitative data. So we will take the uh, conclusions from the papers and compare them to uh, uh, correlations uh, in a data. That's amazing. For, for three selected countries, it will be uh, the best case, which is South Korea and very good clean data. Uh, worst case, we still have to decide <laughs> what it will be. Daniel will help me with that. And uh, the middle US. Will... No, US is mm. not the worst. It's in the middle. 
the worst is uh, probably something like um, Spain, Italy, uh, Iran, or uh, France. Hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, any blockers? Uh, we probably need more NLP people, but as I'm working on a structure which now finally starts looking as a structure, uh, it will be like, I think tomorrow more clear what do we need exactly. Sounds great. All right, sounds good. Thank you so much. Uh, Geotask, Daniel. Yes, hi everyone. Uh, so first things first, we have delivered on the um, common GitHub under task geo. Uh, some codes that allow to extract data set of uh, temperature measurements around the globe, uh, the one that uh, Maya mentioned before. And uh, we hopefully will soon enough uh, improve it by adding um, humidity. Uh, so we have started this very interesting collaboration with the, the risk team. Uh, essentially, what's going on is uh, uh, they find and define risk factors in which we can be interested uh, by looking at the literature. We provide the data and then uh, together we will uh, analyze the data to actually see what the impacts are from observational data. Um, so that's, uh, that's one of the ways in which we, we want to, to proceed. Then on specific kinds of data that we are extracting right now. Um, we are extracting granular data about contagion in the USA, uh, including number of positive and negative tests done. Uh, at state level, we have contagion data at county level. And this hopefully in the next two, three days, we'll put also on GitHub. Uh, we will enhance the meteorological data uh, that we already provided on GitHub. We are working on demographic data like population density, distribution of sex and age, uh, all of this um, to contribute to the efforts of the task risk. Um, and we also have uh, some people starting to work uh, for granular data on the spread of the virus in South Korea, since we know we have very good data over there. And then we have a couple of people doing NLP to try to, ex to find, I would say, first task we want to do is to find clinical studies and to find out where they were done. And uh, hopefully we would like to do something like on a word map, uh, possibility of selecting a location and seeing what studies have been done in that location could be helpful to understand uh, what changes from place to place or things like that. Um, of course, any input ideas are appreciated. Amazing. Um, might be actually, in, in the new metadata, they do include location for the universities that the research was taking place at. So you might want to look at the new data. Yes, um, but clinical clinical trials in that's some, certainly something that uh, we want to look at. I've uh, um, directed the two people working on that to talk with you. I don't know if they already contacted you. Um, thing is, uh, you might have... Uh, so first of all, you have to find if there are clinical uh, tests or not. I guess this is, should be quite easy at this point. And then you might have researchers <coughs> affiliated to one university and that do a clinical test at uh, a hospital in another place. Uh, so that's something also to be maybe considered, but Amazing. to see going forward, I'll leave it to our NLP people to precisely define this problem. Do you have any blockers at the moment? I think right now my main blocker is like the 24 hours uh, in a day. <laughs> but uh, we're, we're onboarding a lot of people. I have like three new people joining us, three or four new people joining us today. And yeah, the thing is really exploding. So at some point, we'll probably need someone to help me with project management because sure. I might get overwhelmed. But uh, for now, it's still relatively manageable. I'm trying to organize in small sub teams, uh, maybe with one coordinator when we have more than three people. Sounds great. In a single task. Are you All looking right. at clinical trials? Are you looking at clinicaltrials.gov for the clinical trial data? 
no. But please write me in, uh, in, in Slack. We can discuss about this. Okay. Sounds great. The next task, Thanks. transmission, Christine. Hi. So, uh, yeah, so yesterday we finally got some momentum and uh, that's really great. We got some new joints and yeah, we, for now, uh, I think we are, uh, so we have a search engine set up and then we're just working on making it, the workflow better and the interface better. And then uh, we will, I think in the next week we'll be able to do a lot more since there are people, new people joining. Uh, we're gonna do uh, focus on a few sub questions and uh, get uh, the initial list of articles sorted. Um, and then at the same time, we also have someone. Well, we do need more, probably more help working on um, in terms of information extraction from the papers. Uh, we have Trenton. Chang working on some NER efforts on that, but that's it. So yeah, if anyone interested in um, looking into how we can get the data information out of the papers, that would be great. Sounds good. Any blockers? Yeah, so uh, right now we, we, we have a pretty good momentum going on and then, but we, yeah, we do need more help in terms of uh, NLP tax. I will say. Sounds good. All right. The next are, task. Are those NLP tests defined in Trello cards? I mean, do you guys have like a clear enumeration of uh, what you need help with so people would be able to uh, jump on? That, that's, that's a good, good question. So, uh, yeah, I'm trying to do that, but I do need uh, more probably expert uh, expertise on that, like uh, what kind of approaches that we should take to to work on this. So if uh, anyone's interested in looking into our questions, uh, please get in contact with me. And I know Trello can be a little bit thick, so definitely we now have that risk uh, forum that Daniel made and teams are beginning to fill that out. So if you're looking for something to go, that's a great place to go to get a clear, concise idea of what expertise is needed and what it's for. Sounds great. Next task, uh, vaccines, Dan Sosa. Uh, hey, Dan here. So. Yesterday, the biggest thing was that we made a GitHub repo for the team. And so I think that's going to be a huge as a place to centralize all of our code. And it features a lot of like onboarding documentation. So um, one interesting, interesting thing to think about is like a code of conduct. And if we want to standardize that across the whole Corona Y organization. Um, but I, I fleshed that out a lot yesterday. So we have that in place. Besides that, we did a little bit of uh, we lost you for. Hello, wait. Sorry, my. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay, so I'm on my phone now. My internet's not very good right now. So. Um, okay, so I was saying that we worked on a GitHub repo. Uh, had some onboarding documentation, some codes of conduct. Uh, we should think about standardizing that kind of stuff across the different Corona Y teams. I think that's um, pretty helpful for a lot of people. Uh, besides that, we've done some very basic like. Yeah, name and any recognition of drug mentioned, and then trying to do some very basic like relation extraction of which drugs are being considered as treatments, um, just based on co-occurrences, so, like very simple. We're also trying to, we're going to start thinking about classifying different types of evidence. So some people have been mentioning like clinical versus experimental versus computational. Uh, we're going to take a deeper dive into that today. Uh, and that's, uh, that's what I have to report right now. No big blockers. We're going to start doing some recruiting as we narrow down the focus of each uh, specific subtask. Sounds great. It does sound like we're making amazing progress across different teams. I do think that the example of Geo and Risk team collaborating is also amazing. So uh, let's see what other amazing things we're, we're going to see in the next couple of days. So the next thing to discuss is the... Uh, on the GitHub... Oh, this is Tina. On the the GitHub that was created, there is that one of is that one of the branches from the main Corona GitHub, or is that a totally different repo? Yeah, so I just put the link on the chat right now, and it's um uh, it's one of the repositories within the organization okay. of Corona Y. I've just been developing there and just adding some kind of framework and like directory structure and onboarding documentation. 
Yeah, I think it's one of the pieces that I missed awesome. out in the global Thanks. structure of the document. So I'll probably work with you, Dan, to include that and provide guidance. Sounds to great. Sorry, awesome. I, I actually forgot to mention, like, uh, when I was listening to uh, Daniel from um, the GEO team, I uh, have an idea of uh, things that we can look at. So, uh, so they have uh, collected uh, the basically the incidence of coronaviruses uh, in the United States, and we're actually looking at some uh, the effectiveness of uh, some movement control strategies, policies. Um, so it would be interesting if uh, we can get some data on what has been implemented in at the state level. Or that would be amazing. Yes, we yeah. we we have a couple of people looking into that kind of building yeah. scrappers for news and stuff like that. But if you already have something in that direction, please share with us because it would be really great. And uh, we haven't had anything by that. I think that's something we can probably look into. Too. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. Yeah. Uh, we can we can talk on Slack later if you want. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. That sounds it's great. Good. And I also think it's a good example of you know us seeing that. The original tasks that were put on Kaggle are not necessarily, you know, tasks. They're just, you know, some structures for us to form around. But then eventually we'll realize that GeoTask is actually attaching to many other tasks. And we'll, we'll just have to be flexible and figure that out. But yeah, sounds like a great plan. So the next piece on the agenda is discussing medical expert integration and update from Natalie and Steve. Um, are you guys on the call? I'm here. Natalie, are you here? Yeah, I don't uh, think yeah. so. Do you have any okay. update on that topic? Uh, <clears throat> yes, we, uh, we've had a couple meetings uh, about it, plus there's been some conversation in Slack. Um, you, many of you may have seen uh, Savannah's sheet. Uh, I'm going to share my screen for one second. The, um, she, she has been and I don't think she's on the call. So uh, before I uh, talk about her work, let me just check and make sure uh, she's not here. Savannah, are you here by any chance? Okay. Uh, the, she has been collecting, uh, trying to uh, collect domain expertise and uh, document that in a way that it can be used by uh, language processing and machine learning tools. Uh, I'm working to try and kind of simplify that a little bit and put it in a form that uh, could be um, <clears throat> built, uh, easily pulled into various models. I think our goal here is to try and collect everything that's been done from a language and processing perspective in terms of the input of domain experts and have a standard set of, of keywords and lists and questions and tasks uh, recognizing that some are going to be specific to tasks and some are going to be general that can be applied across uh, all of the tasks. Uh, but having a single repository will be beneficial to all teams because you'll be able to see sort of how these queries were structured uh, in order to surface the relevant documents and, relative, and relevant passages. So what I'm doing with this, and I'm going to put this on the Slack uh, and try and then get it into individual teams, is created a data dictionary for all of the stuff that she put in here. Explain, she and I have been working on uh, creating, explaining what's in this document. Um, the uh, trying to standardize it in a way uh, that it could be useful across teams. Uh, but as I said, leaving opportunities uh, to, to construct, make constructs that are task specific. I think somebody needs to mute. Yeah, I just mute. Um, okay, thanks. Uh, and uh, and see if I can pull in anything else that's uh, any other notebooks that have sort of tackled the same problem. So we have one one place where we have a lot of this terminology that's being used to really drive uh, the the surfacing of the um, relevant documents. So I'm going to leave it there on this call. Uh, just wanted to provide an overview of what this what the role of this spreadsheet is. Um, I'm going to. You know, try and document it, uh, get it going in the domain expertise channel as well as the task channels uh, so that we can get input. Uh, my request is for you to take a look at it, provide your uh, informed uh, opinions and thoughts on it, and help me capture everything that's already been done 
in terms of domain expertise used in the language processing uh, and any machine learning um, so that we can have a, a single repository where we can take a, a macro perspective look at, at how we have incorporated that expertise into the modeling. Sounds great. Definitely the much needed work. I think uh, what will be helpful for you is that uh, a new guy that recruited seven medical students to help with uh, some attribution. I forgot his name, but he literally got seven students to join Slack yesterday. So maybe you can uh, uh, organize something with them. Uh, yeah, I think this, uh, any, you know, them as well as any other subject matter experts, and I want to set this up in a way that uh, it's very easy for them to contribute uh, and uh, provide some input. Sounds great. All right. So the other point on the agenda, current organizational challenges, resource needs. Uh, I personally have a major challenge inviting 200 people to the calendar event. If someone has a solution to that, because I just can't do it. it doesn't let me do that. You can do an uh, API. Yeah, whoever can uh, DM me and help me figure that out, that would be great. I'll, I'll literally you spend 30 minutes. There were several I'm suggestions on, on, right on Slack. Yeah, there were okay. several suggestions provided on Slack today. I'll check it out. Sounds good. And anyone else that has any major challenges from the admin te team that needs help? Uh, there's a team assessments uh, workbook that's been created. I just I put the link in the chat uh, up at the beginning of the chat. That's been a really good place to um, to communicate uh, team needs as well. That's great. One, one thing that definitely is critical that if I can get a couple, like even just one person from each of these different channels to help with, we need to get those consolidated spreadsheets that are clear for people who don't even have the domain expertise to know, you know what are the data sets that we're wanting and, and that we have and where are they? Um, what's the data pool? Uh, where are any of the results and what are any of the data visualizations and things that communications can then grab and, and put out. That'll help us get that cross-team pollination going. Uh, the, the clearer those things are, the easier that'll be. From a project reporting perspective of just kind of understanding where we are as a whole, there's a start, uh, there's a link that's provided in the chat as well. Um, so Arthur, I know you had, had shown um, like your vision of the notebooks. Um, and I think that's really helpful. Um, I don't know if this will be helpful for you as well, but um, from a, a conceptual standpoint of how this all converges, I think um, at the very least, this is helpful um, to start visualizing that. Right. Dashboard. Uh, yes, it does. Yeah, be. I think it will be helpful because notebooks are very self-centered. This is the task and that's what we're doing and we need the big picture dashboard. Here are, you know, the, the current summaries of what's happening. Sounds great. All right, uh, and I think we still have a couple of minutes for Q&A. Whoever is still new and needs help or has any questions um, that can be answered quickly right now, uh, speak up. Let us know if you have any suggestions on how we can make it better as a group because it's it's growing crazy and we're trying our best. Hi everybody. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Um, so I just joined today. Um, I had a question. Um, uh, but before that, I think this meeting went really well. It seems like everything's quite organized. And um, I was really able to easily uh, contact the team leads on Slack before this meeting. Uh, my question is, um, I think I have already spoken to Dan Sosa about a task that I could get started on. But uh, is there any uh, resources, cloud resources that um, you know, the group as a whole is using that I can get access to or are people expected to you know, sort of find out or use their own Google credits or something like that or the planner of their own systems we have available how to use that or we're losing you. If you can speak louder. Uh is this better? Yep. 
so my question is, uh, how are people managing resources? Are they are individual contributors expected to use their own PCs or their own Google credits or something? Or is there some group um, uh, cloud environment that we can get access to? We, we currently have a really small server. It's been helpful for a couple of people who are just getting kind of ramped up. We're working as hard as we can to get those credits so that we can get access to those. This is also a call for anyone. If you, you know, if you have a, um, a university or a group that has HPC um, capabilities that, that might be willing to throw those our way, or if you are at Amazon or Google and know somebody who might be able to, to help us fast track that a little bit, that would be fantastic. Okay. Um, I will ping you for details on that server. Um, I'm not sure if I know anyone directly, but I can ask around a bit and I'll uh, ping you again if I get any info. Thanks, Daniel. Anyone else? Hello. So, mandatory notification, don't use computational resources at your job if you have an explicit permission to do so. And just to expand on that point, like what people are using, uh, everybody I talk to usually either running their own machine or they use Google Collab or Kaggle platform. So again, we're working on trying to consolidate the uh, resource requests and get like a AWS or Google Cloud support or et cetera. But so far, again, everybody is just like doing something on their own with whatever available to them. We're also starting to have like conversation, again, consolidating personal resources. So for example, somebody could have a powerful GPU available to them, simply like at their house with a desktop machine that they're not using. So again, it's a good uh, idea to start that conversation and consolidate the requests. What do we need and what do we have available today? What are we going to have available tomorrow and so on. Sounds great. Uh, I'll be wrapping it up. Uh, thank you so much everyone for jumping in. I highly encourage you to start prompting uh, individual calls uh, between your team members and between individual groups that are focused on helping something uh, specific. Uh, I'll be uploading this recording shortly. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, everyone.